Now, what we want to discuss in this uh, part of the uh, session is problem solving versus problem finding, formulation of a problem, types and attributes of research problems, sources of research problems, literature survey and patents and papers. So, now uh, the discussion on problem finding uh, will be uh, much shorter than we spent on problem solving, thinking and so on. This, this, is, this should not be taken to mean that problem finding is a much less significant activity than problem solving. No, far from it as I have said problem finding, finding a good problem for research and formulating a good hypothesis is a very, very challenging exercise. The reason why the discussion is brief because often not much can be said about this. Okay, it, uh, it is something that one has to uh, undergo the finding of a problem it is not something that can be put in a very systematic fashion and that is why the discussion is uh, short though it is though the activity is very important it is difficult to say much uh, it is difficult to give guidelines too many guidelines about it. Uh, but there are a few uh, students are used to well defined problems having a single solution they are uncomfortable with ill defined problems. So, often many research scholars have this difficulty and they complain that their guides are not giving them a clear idea of what they should work on. Uh, in fact, uh, some years ago there was a lecture by a Nobel prize winner in IIT Madras and uh, before his lecture he actually mentioned what was his experience and uh, how it was doing a PhD. Now, he did a PhD from a uh, reasonably well known American institution. So, he said when he went there and he joined for a PhD, he was shocked to see that he, his guide did not seem to have clear idea of what he should be working on. So, he said uh, it is only after completing my research I realized that you know that is the state in which any researcher is in the beginning of PhD. So, it is not possible to clearly define the problem in the beginning because defining a problem itself is a part of the research. So, finding a problem is harder but more essential than solving it is much is as much students responsibility as that of the guide. Now, here is some uh, very uh, nice statement of about uh, problem finding a problem must spring from a researcher's mind like a plant springing from its own seed. So, this means that a research scholar a PhD student should spend sufficient time in finding a problem in owning up the problem. <clears throat> so, unless the problem that the research scholar is pursuing has its origin in his own mind the research scholar will not be motivated strongly enough to pursue that. So, his emotional attachment with the problem will not be strong enough. Okay? So, this is very important. So, please do not as a research scholar do not expect your guide to uh, give you the problem and clearly define it for you. Right? Your guide can illustrate areas and the problem in very, very broad terms, but it is your job to define clearly. A just found problem is ill defined. Its formulation as a well defined problem is an iterative process which may get completed only after thesis writing. So, you see all through your research you may be modifying the statement of your research problem and ultimately it comes out in a very perfect shape only after you complete the writing of the thesis. So, it is not as though the problems are defined in the beginning few months and then you take few years to solve the problem and write up the thesis that is not the way it is. Some more words of wisdom about problem finding it is better to kill a little problem than to bruise a much larger one. Now, these advices are not general. So, it varies from uh, person to person. For example, if a research scholar is very strongly motivated and uh, has grand ideas of doing some work that will fetch a Nobel prize or something like that, then the advice is for such a student here, right? this first advice. It is better to kill a little problem than to bruise a much larger one. Many times uh, very good uh, scholars have this difficulty that they uh, take up a very ambitious problem and then they find that uh, they are not able to make much of an impact. So, for such people this advice is made. 
So, do not worry too much whether your problem is the best one to study. Once you go deep, any problem becomes interesting. The important thing is to get started. So, often uh, when PhD scholars join this uh, and uh, at the end of one year, they uh, start comparing um, their own problems with others problems, particularly if they are facing some difficulties and things do not seem to be moving. So, this is a very important advice for students. So, any problem uh, if you become deep, uh, if you go deep, the problem becomes interesting. Okay? So, do not do unjust comparisons. Another statement, problem finding is an auto catalytic reaction. Now, what is the meaning of an auto catalytic reaction? Uh, in auto catalytic reaction, a product of the reaction itself catalyzes further reaction. right? So, there are two components A and B and uh, the resultant is a product C. Now, once a few molecules or atoms of C are generated from the reaction, then these atoms catalyze the reaction further and then increase the rate of the reaction. So, problem finding is like that, which means once you start off and you get a small thing to work on, then as you start working, you will find more and more problems. right? But to go to that stage where you get at least a small problem, significant problem to work on, it may take some time. But once you have hit upon even a small problem and you start working on it, you get many more problems to work on. And then you will not know which problem to choose and which one to discard. So, let us uh, talk about getting started for your research. Ideas strike by chance, but only to a prepared mind. So, this is the important thing. So, is there an element of luck in getting good ideas? Yes, there is an element of luck or chance, but it is very important even that luck will come only to a prepared mind. Now, what is the meaning of a prepared mind? Okay? Uh, so, we will try to give some guidelines on how to prepare your mind. Now, only a prepared mind can follow a lead opened by an observation which is too insignificant to attract the attention of common man. So, to prepare the mind, do the following cyclically. Okay, cyclically means uh, you know one after the other simultaneously. You can you can even use the word simultaneously if you want here. So, reading that is literature survey, implementing someone else's work, and thinking about some doubts that you get when you do reading and implement someone else's work. So, the important thing to note here is that uh, research is not like first doing only literature survey for a few months and then getting into the next stage and so on. Many things have to start simultaneously. So, here what is suggested is supposing you have identified an area and you are start you have started reading literature. It is not a good idea to just keep on reading without doing anything. So, now what can you start on because you have not yet found a problem for research. What you can do is when you read, uh, you will come across some implementations of some ideas when you read some papers. Now, you try to replicate those, those things yourself. So, suppose somebody has given a derivation of, an, of a, a particular solution, you go through the derivation yourself, do the derivation yourself. Somebody has done some simulation and given some results. If you have the facility, you try to repeat the simulations for the same data that is given in the paper and see whether you get the same result. Someone has done an experiment and got some data. If you have the apparatus, you repeat that experiment. So, repeating what somebody else has done is a good starting point. Now, this should be done parallelly with reading. So, you read for some time, then some time you spend in implementing someone else's work, then again you come back and read, and then you think about uh, some doubts which you may be getting, right, or difficulties that you may face in the course of this. So, uh, uh, to repeat, only reading is not a good starting point. You must do something. Now, uh, this I will not spend much time. Uh, Dr. Sukat may, uh, in fact, uh, steps in finding a problem and formulating a hypothesis. He has put down exactly the same steps. What I will do is, I will give you an example of how uh, a hypo hypothesis gets formulated. So, broadly, these are the steps. First, a very general vague statement then there may be some ambiguities that you resolve. Then thinking and rephrasing. So, this is an iterative process. 
So, uh, you try to resolve ambiguities and for doing so, you may have to think and rephrase, restate the your uh, problem and so on and this you will go, you may spend some time doing this iteratively. And then finally, comes out a clear, concise, manageable statement. As I mentioned already, the time period from a general statement and finally, a clear, concise, manageable statement can be the start of the PhD work and thesis writing, end of thesis writing. So, you, uh, you know it can be uh, that long or alternately the uh, clarity in your statement may come well before you start writing your thesis, but you should not be surprised if even during thesis writing you know you modify your statement and uh, you are still trying to make it clear and concise. So, let me take an example of uh, how you make a hypothesis precise starting with a general statement. Now, suppose uh, there is someone who is doing research on uh, comparing the productivity in Japan with the productivity in India. Now, uh, just talking about productivity is, uh, uh, is vague. Evidently, we are talking about industrial productivity that is clear, but then productivity of uh, which kind of products that is very important. So, this is how you start making the statement more and more precise. So, first step could be that you limit the duration in which uh, you are going to study uh, this relative productivities. For instance, here you can uh, restrict yourself to a 10 year span 1971 to 1980. So, productivity of manufacturing industries uh, you compare during a particular duration. So, you restrict the duration, you specify that I am going to study for this duration to make the statement more precise. And then you might find that you know productivity in uh, let us say uh, Japan was higher than in India and you want to give reasons for it, why this was higher and so on. Now, what form of productivity? So, here you are making the statement more precise, you say it is labor productivity and then what kind of industries? So, you select some industry uh, 15 areas of industries that you want to compare. You cannot compare uh, an industry which is producing automobiles with an industry which produces uh, semiconductor products, right. You, so, you have to uh, compare uh, industries in the same area. So, that is the next thing that you are doing here. Labor productivity of 15 selected manufacturing industries was higher in Japan than in India during 71 to 70, 1980. This is a hypothesis that you are formulating. Of course, you have to uh, justify your hypothesis that comes later. Okay. Uh, this is another uh, method of formulate another uh, example. You can go through this example yourself. I will uh, just leave it to you. Now, types of research problems. One of the uh, persons who made presentation in the morning did uh, you know talk about this a little bit. So, I will just uh, leave this. I think uh, and Professor Sukhath may also mentioned about types of problems. Now, this is an important uh, slide. How do you know that your problem is a good one to work on? So, what criteria you must use to assess uh, your research problem? So, one dimension is difficulty. Is your is the problem you have chosen difficult enough for you to you know spend uh, 3 or 4 years of your time. Next, does it have value or is it useful? Third aspect, so what I am discussing is not necessarily in that order, right? Originality, is the kind of work that you do would it be original or would it be uh, something that other people have done, the methodology you are adopting and so on. Then is it interesting? Now, uh, note that you know a problem may be sufficiently difficult, uh, it may be original, but not necessarily interesting. So, interesting is another dimension. So, a problem becomes interesting if it goes contrary to what uh, people normally believe. For instance, we discussed an example of uh, research in area of obesity and then we said that uh, a researcher you know showed with the help of an experiment that it is the external factors such as availability of food that dictates the eating habits of fat people than any internal factor. Now, people normally tend to believe that the factors which are responsible for overeating are internal to the people, 
So, here is something interesting somebody is saying no the factors are external. So, then it becomes more interesting significance and impact. So, now this particular thing is may be difficult to judge okay. um, exactly how much impact will a research work have uh, may be difficult to judge, but at least we can ensure and we can see that these dimensions difficulty, usefulness, originality and, and uh, interest uh, whether the problem is interesting or not we can check on these and we hope that if a problem has all these dimensions it is likely to make impact, but still uh, the level of impact can be uh, may not be possible to judge. Uh, in this uh, context I want to uh, give an example. So, uh, it is true of all creative works that uh, it may be difficult to judge its impact prejudge the impact of your creative work. Uh, a famous music director was once uh, asked this question as to which he regarded as his best compositions, 10 best compositions. Now, and which are these compositions in which he spent lot of time, uh, time and effort. Now, it turned out that only 6 of those compositions were actually uh, musical hits in the public mind. This was a film music director. So, in terms of impact only 6 of the 10 compositions that the composer felt he had spent lot of time on made impact. And interestingly he said that some of the uh, uh, songs which became hits he had not spent much time at all and uh, they were composed uh, you know just maybe over a few days and it was completely a surprise to note that these songs made impact. So, this is true of all creative activity that uh, it may be difficult to judge the impact, but at least we must make uh, effort to see that the other dimensions difficulty, usefulness, value, originality and uh, interesting nature we should ensure. And finally, uh, any problem that you choose I mentioned this in the context of uh, uh, answering a question by one of the participants on you know whether he should work on nano machining or not. So, cost equipment and cooperation uh, we must also assess this particular aspect. For instance, there may be a research scholar who is not very comfortable uh, dealing with a large number of people for getting things done. In, in which case, if he chooses a problem for which he has to frequently go to and take the help of others okay, in uh, doing experiments, uh, in uh, getting things done in different laboratories and so on, he may find it difficult. So, if it does not suit his personality, then you know you must choose an appropriate problem which suits the personality. But more than that I would say the cost and equipment is a major consideration. So, all these things should be taken into account before choosing a problem. So, sources of interesting research, explanation of an anomaly, solution of a contradiction, transplantation of ideas and explanations from one context to another. These are uh, three types of uh, research which will uh, which ultimately become interesting. So, explanation of an anomaly. So, what is an anomaly? So, for instance you know that uh, taking an example from uh, a simple example for electrical engineering, if you increase the voltage across a device then the current increases. Now, supposing you come across a characteristics a uh, set of characteristics in which the current decreases when you increase the voltage. Now, this is an anomalous behavior right does not confirm to commonly uh, seen uh, pattern. Now, such a thing if you choose for your research and you can explain assuming that others have not explained then you know it can be interesting. Solution of a contradiction again taking the example from electrical engineering um, for example, my area of semiconductor devices uh, normally if you try to increase the power rating of the device the device will become much slower okay, it will not respond quickly to any changes in voltage or current. So, the more power a device has to uh, support or manage the slower is its speed. So, there is a contradiction between power and speed. Now, if you come up with a device a new device in which it manages the same amount of power as a conventional device, but it does so its uh, speed is much higher then you know it is likely to be interesting the research is likely to be interesting. 
Now, similarly, uh, transplantation of ideas and explanations from one context to another. So, we gave some examples, this is nothing but analogy and uh, we gave an example of uh, developing a model for a atom from uh, the uh, knowledge of the solar system and uh, applying the similar ideas in a different situation. So, this can also make your research interesting. Now, here are a few uh, more sources of research problems. Okay, when you are doing literature search, you must look at the future work sections in thesis and papers. Then you must interact with uh, experienced researchers in the field and also engage in uh, you know teaching, explaining, answering doubts and so on. Comparing different approaches by some objective measures of efficiency or accuracy. So, you are uh, coming across different approaches of doing the same thing in literature, compare, compare these approaches okay, and uh, that can give you some research uh, problems to work on. Some other things are also given here, they are self explanatory. You can go through this, uh, uh, this slide, they, all the statements are self explanatory here. Now, let me spend uh, maybe in the next 5 or 10 minutes, I will close this about literature survey. Uh, so, we will try to answer why literature survey, what to read, how much to read, how to read and the importance of note taking in the context of literature survey. Now, why you should do literature survey? To know sufficiently enough to identify gaps, this is well known. So, I will not uh, discuss on this, but this is important to know the views and interest of others in a topic. Right? Now, supposing uh, you want to choose a topic for your research and you want to know whether it will be relevant, whether it will be interesting to others, okay, whether it will be useful, rather interesting, I have already discussed how a problem becomes interesting and so on, then it is uh, good to see the publications. Now, if no publications are coming in that area in recent years, maybe it means that that problem is not of interest. This, can, this cannot be uh, generalized uh, beyond a point, but by and large this is true. So, uh, how do you know, uh, uh, what do you mean by recent years? Uh, normal practice is to look for the last 5 years okay, as a guideline and see whether any publications are coming in the area in the last 5 years. Another important thing to know and establish contact with people who may be interested in your work. Okay. So, after PhD you may like to do a post doc. So, you would like to know where uh, you can go, what are the options available to know if others have already done what you want to do, to integrate and compare various ideas on a topic, to get hints on how to tackle a problem. Now, what are the sources, what, what to read? So, you should read journal papers, patents, research reports, conference proceedings and thesis. These are the various things that uh, you can read. Some other sources are also written here, the self explanatory. How much to read? Now, this is uh, uh, a question that many research scholars have that are they reading sufficiently enough? Start with articles published recently and go back to about 5 years earlier. Now, this is the approach you should take. In order to understand the articles which are, which are published in the last 5 years, you may have to read uh, literature which is published much earlier. Okay? So, that you may have to do, but your starting point is last 5 years, that is what is important. So, that you remain current in whatever work you are doing. Read and think alternately, do not spend eternity on literature survey, start doing your own thinking early. One has to start in a state of partial ignorance and this has advantage that you are free from prejudice which suppresses new ways of doing things. Reading should continue throughout the research process. Sometimes what happens is research scholars uh, do literature survey for few months, then they hit upon a problem to work on and when they are working on the problem, they forget about literature survey. Okay? So, they, are, they work for a couple of years and then uh, they find that you know they have done work which they feel they can publish and at that point, they uh, do literature survey again and they find that you know same problem has been tackled by somebody else. So, unless you keep doing, uh, keep scanning the literature continuously. Uh, you will get into these difficulties. 
how to read. I think um, on this topic also uh, something was told earlier. Uh, the important point to uh, note here is the last point made here. One can read word by word, line by line, paragraph by paragraph, chapter by chapter or even book by book. Now, this is an important statement. In fact, uh, this statement, uh, let me uh, illustrate a small uh, anecdote about this. Uh, once uh, Swami Vivekananda took a book from a library and he returned it back within a week. It was a fairly fat book. So, the librarian uh, asked whether did you read this book or you, uh, you know, you just scanned a few pages and you are returning back. No, he said uh, he has read the book. He said it is not possible. How can someone read such a fat book? And this was the answer he gave. So, he said people can read word by word, line by line, paragraph by paragraph or even chapter by chapter and uh, you know and to put it more dramatically book by book. So, what it means is uh, a small child normally reads you know puts the finger under each letter and that is how he or she reads a word. And then as you grow you start uh, reading one word at a time and so on and then as you develop your reading habit you can even read line by line quickly the whole line you read. It does not mean that you read every word, but you see a set of words and then you get the gist. So, sometimes if you are a very experienced reader, even by looking at a few lines, you can get the gist of a few lines together. Now, this is the ability that you have to develop. You cannot read word by word. If you uh, use that kind of an approach, you cannot read so many papers that you have to read. So, you must learn to quickly get a gist of uh, whatever you are reading. Now, that is where you have to first scan. So, scanning can involve the following, you look at the title, okay, look at the abstract, look at the conclusion and look at the figures. Figures are very important, uh, you can read by figures alone what is happening in a, in a paper. Then what you should do is you must highlight whenever you are reading the few points that you have come across and so that you can read those highlighted points in detail if there is a necessity. Uh, on internet a lot of material is available on how to develop good reading skills. Okay. So, how to read fast? So, you can do a literature search on this and you will get lot of ideas. In fact, uh, this thing is very effectively demonstrated to students. I remember uh, one instance where uh, in one of my group meetings, I had asked a student to present some information and uh, this student presented information, he drew a diagram of uh, some setup. I, uh, I wanted dimensions of uh, some particular uh, device that he had drawn. He said uh, he made uh, you know he read the paper two or three times, but he did not get the dimensions that I was asking for. I asked him uh, that you know how did you read? He said sir I have re read the complete paper line by line. I asked him for the paper uh, right and then it took me only a minute to locate the place where actually the dimensions were provided. So, the student was surprised, but how is it possible? Now, this is what is important. If you try to read uh, word by word, you might get tired. Okay? Your mind may, may uh, get tired because of monotony in the beginning and by the time you come to a point where actually you have to you know concentrate, you will not be able to concentrate. So, you must know what kind of an information is available in which location in a paper and you must try to search around that place rather than reading the whole paper to locate this. So, note taking, a few points about note taking, uh, these are also explained here. Uh, it is very important to keep notes when you are doing literature survey, because when you read 50 papers for instance, after uh, uh, 4 or 5 months and then uh, you uh, want to go back to some paper in which some idea was presented, you will not know which paper it was. So, if you make a proper note keeping important information about the references, uh, noting that also against an idea that you have read, then it can be a great help. Maybe I will uh, have a few minutes of interaction. Let us take Wales University, Chennai. I want to convey some message to the participants. That is, here we are seeing that so many participants are uh, doing research and they want to do the research. 
so that i want to convey some message it is most of the people are thinking that the phd is the only way to do the research that is not like that it is when we want to do phd then before that itself we have to start the research work then only we can finish it in time and also it is it should be a efficient one and also so many people are thinking that the uh, area choosing will be a guidance given by some other persons that is not like that whatever we had done and whatever we had studied in our ug and pg in that we will get some idea or interest in that that has to be extended as a research and then they can register for phd that is the message i want to convey so that when they are that's all sir over to you uh, let me uh, make minor revisions in what you have said though it is true that uh, you uh, prepare yourself for research by doing your uh, bachelor's and masters but the exact problem you want to work on you may uh, get an idea of this only when you do literature survey of journal papers okay by and large sometimes you may uh, get a very good doubt based on what ever has been taught in the class and that may be good enough for a research problem but often unless you do that kind of a literature survey okay of journal papers where other research work is published textbooks are uh, not the really the places where latest research is talked about okay uh, so that is a for choosing our broad area we can uh, get idea from our ug and pg after choosing the broad area in order to find out the this problem or the problem finding we can go for journals or some other papers like that yes uh the question is yesterday there was a suggestion that once you formulate the problem you give a seminar but i have a feeling that won't it uh, uh, result in some uh, there is a risk involved in that say for example suppose you finalize a problem and then you decide how you are going to proceed somebody else who is working in the similar area can get this idea and then why not he take this idea and then do research over to you sir now this problem can be easily um, uh, overcome by choosing an appropriate people in your seminar right you choose people who are in your same area but uh, will not for example in a in a research group two people will not uh, you know do the same problem definitely not they will have different uh, problems to work on though the area may be the same okay that is one point second point is we must also uh, uh, introspect whether this fear uh, is our own made up uh, you know it is a it is our own uh, kind of nature to be suspicious or whether there is any real truth in it are there people around who will really steal your ideas many times what happens is uh, we may be suspicious actually people may not be interested in stealing an idea right but you are right sometimes it can happen so uh, seminar doesn't necessarily mean a broadcast to the whole world right seminar means it is an occasion for you to speak about your work as we said there is a link between uh, speaking all these activities like speaking writing and so on so speaking about your work writing about your work it stimulates thinking plus comments made by others will definitely add uh, much more uh, stimulus to new ideas so you will lose the benefit of that okay so that is the point that is being made so that is a very significant uh, uh, loss i would say so if it is possible you should definitely give seminars on your work uh, whatever uh, uh, thing you propose to do okay but uh, say suppose uh, you present in some conference this idea in some conference then you can claim that your work this is your own work so that uh, you can proceed there yes and after that uh, can you give a presentation won't it be more effective yes yes uh see i think uh, there are different types of seminars right uh, seminars are given uh, for different reasons uh when uh, it was suggested that you give a seminar uh in the beginning of your research the goal of that seminar is different goal of that seminar seminar is to uh 
uh, let us say firm up your own ideas about what you are doing because when you uh, speak formally about your work you spend time in arranging your ideas okay that is one benefit you get plus to get some input from others who are uh, you know uh, friendly and uh, but at the same time critical what they say feel about the problem that you are working on a conference uh, seminar on the other hand unless you are prepared up to some level and you have done some level of contribution you cannot make a conference presentation okay so the type of seminar that was uh, suggested was to get benefit in formulating your problem okay and to uh, just assess whether you are in the right direction so a seminar given at the conference its purpose is different right similarly a seminar given before submitting a thesis after you have made journal publications and conference publication that seminar has a even a different purpose there you are, the purpose of the seminar is to announce your contributions to people so seminars are given with different purpose the uh, first type of seminar is for your benefit not for the benefit of the audience it's for your benefit so uh, pongu engineering college perundurai erod uh, i'm uh, doing my research in humanities i'm just wanting to measure the nervousness of students since it is in humanities and uh, i have prepared a new scale of analysis i would like to know what are the factors that i can add in order to validate my skill i have just gone through existing papers which have also validated their skills and i feel that uh, whether my research and the uh, factors that i have considered so far for validating that skill would be of value or would, would not be of that much valuable so i need your opinions and what are the factors that i can consider to validate my new skill which may be acceptable to others also uh, see uh, now uh, just coincidence uh, the one of the slides that i had on hyp hypothesis is related to nervousness among students it's just a coincidence but more than that i have no acquaintance with this field let me go back to that slide so it's about link between uh, the learning capability and nervousness in students so the hypothesis says average learners are less nervous because they are average so there is a correlation you find that average learners are not so nervous uh, average learners are not so nervous now you want to know why it is so and you want to frame an hypothesis for working in this area right so how this uh, hypothesis can be made more precise so towards the end for example finally a hypothesis that can be tested because the hypothesis should be testable read something like this the students at iit madras having an iq score on the wba intelligence scale within the range of 90 to 110 have low percentile ranks on the sub scores of a personality inventory than a like group of students having a total iq score less greater than 120 so in other words the average learning has been defined in terms of the iq score right because you have to define uh, you know what is what do you mean by an average learner so some quantitative figures have to be given now when you want to generate these numbers you have to define the kind of test because different tests can give you different numbers and then uh, based on these numbers you say that uh, high learners are those who get a score of more than 120 and maybe uh, uh, you know poor learners are those who get a score of less than maybe 80 or something like that so this is how a hypothesis becomes uh, testable and uh, clear okay um, suitable for pursuing in research i think more than that i have nothing to add to you know to uh, what you have asked me but it is an interesting uh, problem to work on so many problems in humanities particularly in psychology are of great interest to everybody though everybody cannot give suggestions on the kind of research problems that uh, you are talking about sir is asking whether is it enough to depend on questions or we are to go for interviews no interview is um, see you can uh, get a written response or you can uh, try to study uh, you can uh, record the responses um, to some stimuli right in interactions you can also make measurements like you measure the blood pressure you uh, you know you get, take the heart beat there can be some parameters which you can measure probably you can use such measures also ha uh, so that is all what i can say sir do you have time for one more question yeah please go ahead uh, sir Uh, yes sir uh, this is a issue which you are uh, talking just a uh, quite a while ago it is about the originality of the work uh, suppose i am doing a work in a particular area and after uh, some time i am seeing uh, the same kind of work as a product 
uh, in what way I can prove the originality of my work, I mean the genuineness of my work. You said that we can give a seminar. If at all I have not given a seminar, uh, in what way I can prove my originality? Okay, let me reframe uh, what you have said. You are saying that uh, you started working on something and then uh, at some point uh, uh, you, when you are reading some literature in your area, you found somebody else is pursuing similar kind of work, right? Now, uh, what happens to whatever effort you have put in? How does it remain original? So now, this sort of a feeling can uh, happen uh, as many people get into this situation. It is not at all an uncommon situation because so many people all over the world are simultaneously working on similar areas, right? Therefore, the ability lies in uh, seeing what are the differences in your approach and the approach adopted by the other person. See, fortunately, there are many things common among people, but there are many things which are unique. So, normally whenever uh, we do independent thinking, there is some element of uniqueness in whatever we think about, even though the matter that we think about may be similar to what other person is doing. So, it depends on the ability, your ability as well as your guide's ability to see which aspect of your work is novel. You can always find something that is different from the other person. So, it is that ability that normally helps in such situations in identifying the where exactly the originality is there. So, some things may uh, you may find which is uh, that they are common, okay. But if you do a careful uh, analysis of your approach and that person's approach, you will find that some aspect you know you may be better than the other person. So, this is where again productive thinking looking at uh, your own work from different angles and other person's work also from different angles is important. Only when you look from many different angles, you will develop discover the strength of your work. So, uh, to repeat, uh, many researchers get into this uh, kind of a situation because there are many people are working in the same area, and uh, you should not get a shock if you, you know, get in, uh, get uh, get into this sort of a situation. You must uh, think about your problem deeply and in different ways, and you will be able to identify some uniqueness because inherently. Uh, people are different, fortunately, in some respect or the other. Okay, one face doesn't resemble the other face. Similarly, one mind doesn't think in the same way as the other mind. Okay, so you must uh, bank on this particular uh, law of nature. Sir, uh, what is the correct time to write a journal paper? Whether uh, after getting the result or uh, whether uh, getting after getting the observations from our uh, result of our work that is after uh, getting the result or after getting some of the observation from our work yeah i have to reframe your question because it's not clear in the way manner you have asked but before that i just want to uh, say something in a lighter vein uh, you know i thought you were saying what is the right time to close for the day so uh, i was thinking that that is what you are going to say so uh, you know we will uh, take your question and then we will close for the day Right uh, now, let to answer your question. Uh, uh, what you seem to be implying is you are you have done an experiment and you have collected some data. Now, after you have got the data, uh, is it the right time to write a paper? Okay, so I, I do not know what you mean by observation and result. Right, so uh, I am assuming that you mean uh, by result interpretation of the data. Okay, because the data itself or the observations themselves can be uh, regarded as result. So, I do not know what you mean by these words. I am assuming that you, are, you have collected some data and then uh, whether this is the right time to write a paper or whether you must explain the data and so on and get some conclusions and then write a paper. So, now it is part of it is executed. After that, can oh. I write a paper? That is what it is not clear what you mean by part of uh, what is executed. So, okay. Huh. That is uh, one of the module, one or two module is executed. Hmm. Whether shall I write a paper uh, based on that results? Look, uh, see, the general guideline is like this you can uh, you, you write a paper whenever you feel that you have something that is significant. For example, Supposing you have come, you have synthesized a new material, 
and let us say you are measuring the conductivity of the new material. Now, you get some value, nobody else has measured the conductivity of that material and nobody has reported the value. Now, in such a situation even that value that you have obtained though you are not able to explain how you get that value itself can be significant. You can probably write a short paper on reporting that uh, you have measured this conductivity and this is the value that you have got and it is something very uh, unusual. So, if something unusual is there you can report right. On the other hand, um, if the value that you get is not very significant right, then it is not the right time to report. You must probably do more work on it you know get an explanation for that value and when you try to derive an explanation suppose you find that some new phenomena are taking place in the material or the device which others have not reported then those phenomena which are new according to you uh, may be worth reporting. So, the point is I think you should uh, look at it from the point of view of significance of whatever you have got at any point of time. If whatever you have got is significant it is new it is of interest then it can be reported that is the stage at which you write the paper understand. So, you should not have uh, the guideline for writing a paper as follows I have done two years some work ok I will write one paper then after another two years I will write another paper ok that is not the way people decide to write papers. So, some people may write a paper within the first year if they got something significant some other people may work for four years and only then write papers they may write four papers after four years all four papers one after the other, but at the end of a four year period because they have done work for four years and uh, you know they have set up apparatus then they have got some uh, observations and they have got the explanations for them and then only they start writing papers ok. So, uh, there is no hard and fast rule about this timing the guideline is is it something significant new then only you write. So, we are closing for the day.